So welcome to Fixing Up Names in Islandora part two. Today we're going to talk about how to do a couple of different tasks that you might encounter when you're fixing up names in your Islandora. Um, the first one is fixing a batch of misspelled names. Uh, and here's an example, Mrs. McNevin Lorne, we want to change to McNev McNevin Lorne, comma, Mrs. Uh, and the other thing is merging a batch of two or more terms into one. So if you have multiple variants of the same name that you want to merge to the sa a single thing, um, we're going to show you how to do that. So I want to recap that this is part two. Part one is available on YouTube. Um, and it ran through how to export a list of all the names in your person taxonomy vocabulary. Um, so you made a view, you made it show fields, the fields included TID and whatever fields you wanted, probably the name of the taxonomy term, um, creating a new display of the data export type, um, and then using that path to the data export view to download your list. And so today's two cases are um, the ones that I could think of that you probably need to, to do. You've got a bunch of names that need fixing, or you've got a bunch of names that need merging. So let's do the easy one first, um, fixing a misspelled name. There's a few steps to this process, but it's fairly straightforward. Um, so we'll create a new spreadsheet with the wrong names and their term IDs, fix up the names, uh, rename the columns to what they need to be, and then use Workbench to update those terms. So we'll jump into a real demo. So here is the list of terms that I exported in part one. Um, and I've highlighted some terms in yellow, the ones that I need to merge. And then down under the M's was the section that I saw we wanted to just fix, change up these names, but leave the taxonomy term intact. Um, so I've copied those into a spreadsheet, which I called metadata.csv. And um, so this is, I, I just used the uh, MacVim or any other text editor to do this. Um, essentially, I went right in there and changed the, the name from the incorrect value to the value that I think is correct. Um, obviously, depending on where you are, there's going to be processes and procedures around making these kinds of decisions. Um, so, you know, I consulted my catalogers for the correct formatting of this kind of name. Um, and so you can see in, uh, in one case, we took out the misses because there were dates there that were uh, effectively enough to qualify which, which person that was. We didn't need the, uh, the title. Um, okay, so I've saved this as a CSV file. Um, most text editors can save things as CSV files, but be very careful. Um, if, you st if you're using a program like Text Edit uh, and you've got something in rich text format or RTF, um, it's going to be very difficult to save that as an actual CSV. So that's why I'm using MacVim, my, uh, my text editor. So I've saved that as metadata.csv and I've created a workbench config file. I've just called it config.yml. And its task is the, uh, the new task added in Workbench called update terms. So that's really important to have. Um, you will need an update mode as well. And it's important for us that it's replace. I, I don't think you can append. Other, other options are append or I think delete, um, but we wanna be replacing the names with the names we've got there. And it's also necessary to have a vocab ID. Um, so this is another sticking point in case you have names in a lot of different vocabularies. You need to import them or you need to fix them in using Workbench one vocabulary at a time. So now I can load up Terminal and I am in this folder. We'll just show my two files um, and I will now run Workbench. Now I have an alias that Workbench, uh, I can just type wb and it does workbench with config equals config.yml and because i specified in config.yml that my input dir is local so uh, that's this one here the input dir equals dot which means my current directory it's going to look for something called metadata.csv so just by leaving all my um files with this particular naming construct, 
um, I can make it really quick to run Workbench. So if I run Workbench with WB, it will update those terms. Uh, and then if I go into my site, um, I'm just gonna go to the person vocabulary. It'll be hard to find them all, but I know that they're on, they were on page four under MRS. And now we can see that um, all the names that started with MRS have been moved to something else. So, that was the demo for fixing up names. Um, the second thing will be merging the variant versions. And this is a little bit more um, intense. So if we had all simple taxonomy relation fields that we were using, uh, we would be able to use the term merge module uh, and just say, I wanna merge these two terms into one and it will update all the references to the old term to point to the new term. Um, but because we're using, or we, we have some terms in the linked agent field, I'm going to show you how to do that manually. Um, so we start by making a new spreadsheet with our terms in question. This is just to keep um, track of them for ourselves in this case. Um, I marked which ones were to keep and which variants will get merged in. Um, then we update all existing references. So we update the nodes that point to the variant terms so that they point to the preferred terms. Uh, and this takes a few steps. And then we'll finally delete the variant terms. So to demonstrate that, I have another folder for merge terms and I split it out into three separate sections. Um, first, we'll get the relevant nodes. And one of the problems with linked agent fields or the typed relation field um, is that views doesn't treat it very well. It doesn't export something that's really easy to round trip and import again. Um, so the best way to get names um, or get node information where you can change the names is using Workbench. So I've created this config.yml file. Um, I'm using get data from view, which means I'm gonna set up a view in Drupal and tell it to just pull those nodes. Um, it's really important that you select the view path. So here it's going to be workbench export names demo. Um, you need to specify a content type, but I, it defaults, defaults to Islandor object. So I didn't really need to put that line in there. And our CSV term mode, I'm going to use as TID. So I want to get a list, uh, a formatted export. So where I can replace the TIDs um, with my, with my new TIDs. And so, to demonstrate that, I've got this really like accessory file that I just kept for my own use, um, where I have each term, term ID, term name, and whether I want to delete it or use it. And so that's going to help me with the next step, which is creating this view. So if I go into my site and head to views, what I did was reuse the workbench export view from part one. Um, so if you remember I'd created this export view and it does a rest export using serializer and the serializer is set to do JSON. Um, that's what we're, we're seeing here is all the JSON. Um, so what I, I added a new rest export display and I called it rest export names demo. Now, is, there's a few hangups here. When you're duplicating the view display, you, you really need to go through um, all the instructions in the generating CSV files um, documentation for Workbench. Um, there are a lot of things that you have to get exactly right or else it won't work. So a few of those are, you always re need to make sure that the settings includes JSON. The new REST export will not have that already set and since it's kind of hidden from you, it's really hard to tell that's what's missing. You'll also need to set up a new path that is unique and make sure that two types of auth authentication are possible, basic auth and cookie. Um, I think permissions view published content was how it was there. And then the other thing is it needs to have a pager. Uh, I think by default, the REST export view shows a specific number of items and that will cause Workbench to fail. So there needs to be a pager. Doesn't really matter how many items are on each page. 
Okay, so to make this just export the stuff that we want, I've added a couple of views, uh, of view filters. So the first one is actually a basic taxonomy filter. I said, you know, filter add has taxonomy term. And when I do that, um, I can, I have this really nice interface where I can just type in the name and select the one that I want. Um, so here I've gone in and selected the terms that we don't want, the, the ones to, that we're going to delete. Um, the reason that I'm doing this, we, we, this won't work for link agent fields. This only works for taxonomy relation fields. In my data, we did have taxonomy relations um, to names in a subject's name and possibly a subject um, vocabulary. Um, so you can set this up, cancel that. Also, you can set up a filter on contributors. So this is the main one that you're doing if you're fixing the linked agents um, or contributors as it's now called. And this is a lot more complicated. Um, so it's important to select the filter that's called field linked agent target ID. The target ID is the term ID. And so if you just had one, you could say is equal to, and then put that one in there. But because we've got a number of them, um, and because this isn't really nicely formatted to give us a chance to say like, it's in this list, you can use a regular expression. So I won't go too much into regular expressions though they're very, very useful. Um, but we've got a pipe delimited list of the term IDs that we want to, to include. Um, surround those by parentheses so that the pipe treats each of these numbers as a complete term. And then at the beginning, a caret to mark the beginning of the string and at the end, a dollar sign to mark the end of the string. And those are really important because if you don't have them, something like 955 could match 1955 or 9550. Um, and if you've got a lot of names, that's even more likely. So always, always make sure that you're matching the entire string. Um, so this setup will filter down um, and it's really difficult to read the REST export output, but I can assure you that this is much shorter uh, than the one that was all terms. Um, and the final thing that I had to do to my filters to make sure that they were working properly um, is create a new filter group and say I want stuff with my bad terms in the, contrib in the contributors field or just any taxonomy relation field. So that was creating the filter group, changing this internal operator to or, and keeping this operator as, whoops, and, there we go. All right, so that's our view. Um, the way to get it out is just by running Workbench with that file as my config file. So I'll go back into the folder. Um, I like to separate things into the different steps that I'm doing. It just really helps me keep track of which file is which. Um, so here I have my config.yaml file and I can run Workbench. All right, and it exported six nodes. Um, I can see these here in this folder that I was in. I've got a new workbench export CSV. So we open that up and, oh, wait, there was one more thing in the config file that was really important that I tell you about. Um, <laughs> the import export CSV field list. Um, this is the way to not have to deal with a bajillion columns. Um, so just specify the fields that you want here. Regardless of those fields that you specify, um, the export is always going to include the title of the node as well. Um, so just, you know, bear with us. It's not quite as clean as it could be. Um, but this includes those fields that could potentially link to our terms. And here we can see all the different multi-valued um, references that each of these things have. So what, what I did for this part, because I'm working on such a small CSV, is I manually went through and replaced the numbers with the better numbers, um, going off of my delete this one, use this one file. If we were doing this at scale, obviously that would not be very uh, effective. So I would probably load it up in something like Python, um, parse the CSV using Python's CSV library, 
split up every field at the pipe so that I've got um, all my individual values, and then programmatically replace those. Um, if it would be helpful, I could create a sample script that could help do this. Um, but for the moment, uh, we're just going to kind of jump over uh, the fixing the spreadsheet part. So I, in this case, I copied my workbench export to a new folder for fixing it. And then I saved my fixed um, as a different file. Uh, I, I really like having the paper trail for all of my different workbench exports and imports and stuff like that. So I know uh, for each step, what's the input, what's the output. All right, so the final step will be to update the nodes themselves. Um, and in this case, I took my fixed workbench export and I copied it into here and renamed it metadata.csv. So this is the copy of the file um, where I've already corrected all those values. And the final config.yml uh, is just an update task. It's updating nodes. It'll update these nodes. Um, not too much important to say, except that update mode replace is extremely important. Um, you want to replace all the existing values with these new values. And that's why it's important not to delete any existing terms in here. Um, so you need to keep those multi-valued fields multi-valued. Um, and I told it to ignore the title because I don't necessarily want to update the title in case some somehow I altered them in the course of this. Now, if I were using a Python script or something, then my output CSV wouldn't have the title in it at all because you don't need that. So to run this, I'll go into the appropriate folder. And because I've named my files uh, in my standard way, I can just type wb again. And so it's updated those nodes. Um, to show you that it actually worked, I can go back into this view where I had my preview, click Update Preview, and see that there's nothing there. So um, I've changed all of the references to these terms in all those filters um, to the other term. All right, so the final step is going to be update, um, deleting the old terms. So I've got that list Where's my list? My list of terms to delete here, and I can load up my IDE or whatever you're gonna use to uh, use Drush. Unfortunately, Workbench doesn't have a delete terms um, procedure yet, but it's fairly easy to do um, with Drush. So I can type, oops, I'm gonna refresh this so that it gives me a, a working terminal. Um, Drush, entity colon delete taxonomy underscore term. And as you can see, I had already run one just to test that this would work. Um, and then I can enter the node IDs that I want to delete. Obviously, you would do this, um, you, you know, you could also generate um, the list of terms. comma there and they're comma delimited just hit enter and it'll delete those taxonomy terms for you um, so now if I just to guarantee we'll go back to taxonomy show you my names person person and it was uh, Belcourt GA now we only have the one term. We've deleted the term which didn't have the hyphen. I know it's a really uh, minuscule difference between those two name versions, but I wanted to go for the one that has them all. Uh, if I click on it, I'm, I'm looking at the things that are tagged with it in taxonomy reference fields. I'm not seeing the stuff that, it, that, has that, that may have that term um, in the linked agent field, just because of how this vocabulary works. All right. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to contact me on Slack. Um, I hope this was useful and let me know if it would be a useful thing to do to share some sort of Python script for batch updating um, terms in a larger spreadsheet. Thank you.